Hi folks, it's Richard from Inclusive Driving. A bit of a longer video today. We're talking about blue badges on private car parks such as supermarkets and cinemas and leisure centres and that sort of thing. Is it a legal requirement to display a blue badge to park in a disabled bay on a private car park? That's the question we're going to answer today. So I did a quick straw poll on YouTube. I, I asked a question, um, I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but it was basically, do you have to, is it a legal requirement? No, is it illegal to park in a disabled bay without a blue badge? And the options were yes, it's illegal or no, it's not illegal. And the result was approximately 70% of people stared or thought it was illegal to park in a blue uh, in a disabled bay without a blue badge in other words if you didn't have a blue badge on display it was illegal to park in that parking bay so let's have a look at what the law says so there are a couple of relevant laws here um, the most relevant one is going to be the equality act of 2010 but there is also some separate legislation um, for blue badges itself. And it's it's something like the disabled persons in brackets motor vehicles blue badge act or something like that. I'll put the uh, I'll put the full title up there and there's links to it in the description so you can read it yourself. Now, when you get a blue badge, just let me let me find mine. Let's just cover up some bits that are sort of purse private. Okay, so this is a blue badge. Uh, it's not for me. This was um, issued in the name of my company. So there we are. You can see it there. Inclusive driving. So this blue badge was issued to me by Wolverhampton Council um, because they were very forward thinking, actually. Um, and because I'm teaching disabled people who may not yet have thought to get hold of a blue badge for themselves um, this makes it easier for disabled people to learn um, for example if we're pulling up on a single yellow line and we want to, to park there so the disabled person can practice pulling up can practice parking in a specified area on the side of the road practice getting their wheelchair in and out of the car themselves anyway that's by the by so thinking about private car parks such as supermarkets no let's just come back to the blue badge it comes with a booklet which is filed away in my filing cabinet and it's quite clear in that booklet that the blue badge is for on street parking concessions only it has no relevance on private land and this is also mentioned in this document up here um, the disabled persons motor vehicles blue badge law full title up there uh, section 12.1 it says there that local councils can issue the blue badges and it's for on street parking only it has no relevance in supermarket car parks or leisure centers because these are covered by the equality act so there's a separate duty under the equality act so let's talk about that the equality act of 2010 lists what is called protected characteristics and it makes it illegal to discriminate against somebody on the basis of any of those protected characteristics we'll list them there one of those is disability um, but it also sets out a duty to make reasonable adjustments for people with these protected characteristics and again we're focusing on disability so the equality act states basically that supermarkets leisure centers cinemas private car parks like that have a duty to provide designated parking bays for disabled people 
if they didn't do that, if they didn't provide those bays, they would be discriminating against disabled people and they'd end up in a whole load of trouble. But you also need to recognise that the Equality Act does not specify anywhere that a blue badge is a requirement to park in the bay. And here's why. You can be disabled and not have a blue badge. You might choose not to apply for a blue badge or you may have recently become disabled and you're in the process of applying for a blue badge and these things don't come through the post quickly. So there's going to be a period of time when you are entitled to use the reasonable adjustment of the disabled parking bay because you are disabled. OK, you are not entitled to use the parking bay because you specifically have a blue badge. OK, that's the important point. It is your disability that entitles you to use the disabled parking bay. Now, you're going to say, but oh, but these car parks, they'll fine you. And I've got to admit, it's a pain. Hi, it's Richard from the future here. You can see I'm not wearing my orange fleece anymore. I just thought I'd add a little bit more about private parking companies. The rules on supermarket car parks like that is based on contract law. You are forming a contract with the parking company by accepting the terms and conditions of the sign and actually parking there. Now, we need to remember that a contract certainly a contract between a business and a consumer, such as somebody who is visiting one of these car parks, cannot contain unfair or illegal terms. So requiring somebody to display a blue badge is an illegal term because the Equality Act is actually on your side. So that term cannot be enforced. It is an unenforceable term if it ever came to court. OK, back to Richard in the present. You could take the moral high ground or the legal high ground and say, yes, I am entitled to use that parking bay and I don't need to display a blue badge. And you would be absolutely correct. Signs around these car parks, they will say things like if you don't display a blue badge in your park in a disabled bay we're going to issue you a 100 pound parking charge notice remember this is an invoice it is not a fine the black belt barrister describes the difference between fines and invoices on private car parks very well let's put a link to his video up there great guy and so <coughs> the situation you're going to get into is you can legally park in a disabled bay without displaying blue badge, okay? But you're probably going to get a parking ticket, okay? You then have to go through the hassle of challenging that parking ticket. And depending on the parking company and how up to date they are on the Equality Act, and I think you know my view on private parking companies, I basically detest them. I think they are, let's put an expletive word there, um, they exist to make money and screw people over, basically. Um, so you're going to have to then appeal. Maybe have your appeal rejected and have to go to a second appeal. And ultimately, you, you could end up going to court over this. Is it worth it? If you've got a blue badge, maybe display it for convenience. Not because you're legally required to, but display it for convenience. OK, but really, the answer to the question is. You do not need a blue badge by law to park in a disabled bay on a private car park. You could take this all the way to court and win and maybe win some damages. There have been several court cases where because a parking company has discriminated against a disabled person awards have been made to the disabled person okay. it's a long-winded process it's a pain it's not worth it if you've got a blue badge just displayed but the question we were answering is or question we were asking is 
is a blue badge a legal requirement to park in a disabled bay on a private car park and the answer is no it is not a legal requirement to have a blue badge to park on a supermarket car park a private car park in a disabled bay remember this is not legal advice i have warned you that if you park there without displaying a blue badge the law is on your side but it's going to set you up for a whole load of hassle so if you've got a blue badge just display it well, that's all for now and we'll see you on another video very soon